I'm Pete and you're watching Feral Fabrications. I think it's time to fire up the wee furnace. Um, it's been a minute since I did that video about making it. Uh, but I've actually run it a, a bunch of times, I've been playing with it and wanted to get a bit of a handle on it before I did this video. So here we go, the first thing I needed to do was make a bunch of parts so I could actually uh, melt some alloy. It's one thing having a furnace but you've got to actually have some equipment to use it. And of course the burner is a key part of that. Now I did show when I made that uh, furnace this really simple weed burner and you can see I've made this uh, very crude addition to the back of it. The purpose of that is this weed burner won't suck oxygen in. Um, so how I've got around that is to use the shop vac and just hook it up the back of here, blows air in and this really just allows it to funnel the air through here and into the furnace. Um, really supercharges it well so yeah that's how I've, I've sorted that out. The other thing was this came with no pressure regulator and you can see I've added one and I went for a 30 psi unit to make sure that we had plenty of uh, gas pressure and gas flow. Made some crucibles up out of some uh, schedule pipe, um, pretty thick wall stuff, you can see the full a bit of crud on the bottom but um, it's because I've used them a bunch of times. Now these won't last forever but no crucible wool and it was a cheap and easy way to get started, nice and heavy duty, uh, way better than a fire extinguisher and it's got all the pouring stuff on there to easily pour the metal. So. That helps. And these are the tools for lifting the crucibles out of the furnace once it's melted. Um, just a couple of hooks. Hooks onto the crucible like that, pretty straightforward. And the tipper, just got a little tip on the end, poke that through the little bolt and then pour. So. Whipped all that stuff up to make life easy and I've also made a much larger uh, crucible with a slightly nicer spout design than my first version as well. Um, you'll see that in a later video, why? <laughs> Spilling aluminium everywhere. Yeah. Okay, so um, that's the guts of it. I've got some muffin trays to put uh, excess aluminium into. So let's just go get stuck in and melt some alloy. And that's an example how not to light your furnace. You should really put a bit of paper in the bottom and light that and then turn the gas on to save you from losing your eyebrows from a big whoosh of gas. And there we go, I crank up the gas and then turn the blower on. You've got to crank up the gas first, otherwise the blower will just blow the flame out of that type of burner. There's other burners out there that don't need the blower, I'm just improvising with what I've got. Ready to chuck the lid on to get some heat into this thing. And with that done I start throwing some of the aluminium into it to start melting it down. I'm not worried about preheating this stuff because the furnace is cold and there's no risk of a bunch of steam build up or anything here. So I just throw it all in. This is about two minutes into the burn and the aluminium was already getting sticky. So I started uh, drying up my muffin tray um, so that when the excess aluminium is ready, it can be poured into that tray. You can sort of see where the gas escapes at night time quite clearly. You can't see some of the stuff during the day, but it's interesting. And there I am giving a larger chunk a bit of a preheat just to make sure there's no moisture on there because it's molten inside the furnace now. And that took about uh, eight minutes or something to get that aluminium to melt. You can see she's pretty hot inside the furnace. The lid's glowing. The camera can't even see the inside of it. And uh, that chunk of aluminium just melts away straight into the crucible. It doesn't take long at all. Poker. and it's gone. Now I'll just uh, turn the furnace off, leave the flame running um, just so that I know I don't have any gas build up and just skim the dross off the top of the crucible, get the crud out of there basically.
that done, time to crank it up for another minute before pouring just to make sure it's nice and hot. I don't have a temperature gauge, I'm just sort of going off by uh, the glow of the crucible. It's probably exaggerated on this footage as well, it's, it's probably not glowing as red as the camera is showing it, just because it's night time the resolution of the camera uh, makes it a lot hotter than it actually is. So you can see the wee furnace has no trouble getting a bit of heat into it for melting down alloy. I haven't tried any other metals at this stage. Really just want to get all the aluminium stuff I wanted to do out of the way before trying to crank it up to even higher temperatures, which would definitely require an um, improved crucible as well. So ready to pour here. Using the tools, plenty of control. Into the pouring basin and down into the mould. And you can just see the aluminium pop up out of the feeders or risers. Knowing, um, seeing that you know the mould's full. So I tip the extra into the muffin tray to melt down later. All this aluminium is from a video I did cutting up a mag wheel. And it's lasted quite a while. This is how I've been breaking the mould out of the sand, the casting out of the sand. Just popping it over the bucket I store all the sand in and letting it drop into it. find it works pretty well. Don't seem to lose too much sand this way. Bit of a tap just to get any sand off it. Ready to cool it down. I need a bigger bucket, and also a metal one would be nice. With that done, it's cool enough to touch. Doesn't take long in the water to cool it all the way down. But do be careful, make sure it's cold first. And that's the finished casting. There we have it. Hot work we got there. So yeah, all I've really done to this is just cut the uh, risers and stuff off and also the little prongs at the back um, because of the threads on those when you pull it out of the mould it just rips the sand out so I uh, can't get a clean mould on that. Now uh, all in all this isn't too bad I've got a bit of flashing around the edges here which I have managed to do better on some others um, I've reused the sand a bunch of times since I got it from the foundry and I think my skills of keeping it um, sort of in the right mix of moisture to bentonite is um, slowly getting worse but anyway it's doing the job um, this will all clean up with a bit of a file you know spend a bit of time with the file and just file it down um, that'll be the, the bulk of what I do with, to this now so um, all in all that's, that's the part. You can see they're actually about three millimeters shorter than the originals and that's because the liquid aluminium shrinks. Um, there's nothing I can do about that and to be honest I think I'm just going to have mine three millimeters shorter than the originals. That's the driver's side and that's the passenger side. Now this one, the original mould, the tips were a little bit damaged on it so I'll just have to build that up a little bit with some filler or even maybe some aluminium um, knead epoxy or something. I'll just build the tips up. But hey, that is a pretty good replica of the original part. And I'm more than happy to use that on the old race car. So. Right, there we have it. I'm oh, really stoked with how that turned out, making those little bonnet bezels. Uh, you can't buy those parts, so being able to recreate them like that, uh, pretty happy. Thanks a lot to Mike for lending me the originals to take the moulds off, really appreciate it, couldn't have done it without you um, and just stoked that the little uh, GT out there, the GT replica is going to look as, as good as it's going to with these, um, with these recreation parts on there, so stoked about that. 
Okay, I need to get to work on the Capri now. It's uh, coming up to racing, it's only about a month away, so I've still got heaps of work to do on it. I need to get stuck in. So thanks a lot for watching. The next episode will probably be uh, some sort of update on the Capri. So thanks a lot for watching. We'll, we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.